So just how is this spread? Well, it, it appears to, to spread with, with close human contact. I mean, initially there was concern uh, within those markets in Wuhan from those animal markets that it was making this jump from animals to humans, which frankly, and you and I, Anderson, have traveled, uh, you, know, you may remember when we were in Africa, that's how a lot of viruses get into the human population most. Uh, right, they're, zo they're called jump. zoonotic viruses. Exactly, and, and these, there's this constant chatter that's happening, viruses swapping back and forth, animals to humans, and also humans to animals, and most of them don't cause any kind of disease, and you wouldn't even really know it. But every now and then, a virus makes a jump, a pathogen makes a jump, and it causes disease. We saw it with other viruses in the same coronavirus family. SARS was one of those examples. MERS, uh, M-E-R-S, uh, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, another one of those examples. But that's, that's typically how this is happening. The, the animal to human jump now in China, what seems to be the, the, the most common mode of transmission is human to human and typically in close contact, so three to six feet away. Different, for example, than something like measles, where if I were in this room and I uh, had measles, uh, even a couple of hours later, if someone came into this room that wasn't vaccinated, they could get measles. Here, it's really close to close contact, three to six meters, they say, uh, and, the, and the virus might live on surfaces that you can touch for a few hours. Uh, after that, the virus dies. If you touch that virus and then touch your, your nose, your mouth, that's another way that people can get infected. If people for the virus who are asymptomatic, how effective are travel bans? Because even if you don't have a fever, you could be carrying the virus. Yeah, no, that, that is a really good point. And I mean, the person is basically saying, look, you could have an infected person, come, would completely pass all screenings because they're asymptomatic. They could travel around the world several times in a few days and then develop symptoms. Absolutely true. And, and that's a, you know, no matter what, the number of outbreaks that I've covered, that always comes up, is this incubation period. What I would say is that I don't, for, for that reason, it's very hard to, to, to imagine that travel bans coming out of China would necessarily be that effective because of that incubation period. I think it makes sense to limit your travel to a known infected area, such as uh, you know, the Hubei province in Wuhan in China. But other than that, to sort of say the, these, these larger, more all-encompassing travel bans just from a physiologic and, and, and looking at the, the epidemic of the disease, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Hi, I'm Justin Robertson. I'm a CNN photojournalist based in Beijing. I've just boarded a flight from Frankfurt to Beijing and it's astonishing. I've never seen anything like it. Literally everybody on this flight is wearing some some form of, uh, of mask uh, to protect themselves uh, from this virus. Pre-recorded announcements on the flight warning people of the dangers of the virus and, and advising people to wear masks. All passengers are recommended to wear a protection mask at all times. Thank you for your cooperation. All the packaging that the meal served in is, um, is disposable. Um, so it's one-time use and that's due to hygiene reasons. 